Hey, hey, Chris Courtney here, New Pragmatic. It is time for the feedback loop where I take your questions rapid fire. Um, not that there's a lot of rapid fire this morning. Uh, it's a pretty light morning compared to yesterday. Yesterday, I think we ran through. I know, I know it, it looked weird because it's like, oh, it's five on one. That's, uh, did you answer five questions yesterday, Chris? No, I added it up. We answered like 32. Went through 32 yesterday. So a little crazy, um, but, I, but I like it. I like it like that. Um, this morning, uh, dealing with a little bit of weirdness over on, on Discord. Discord pushed a lot of updates, and it, it, it killed one of my bots. And I'm trying to figure out what the what happened there. Um, I've got four bots I use. i got four bots, four little me helpers. Think of it like multiplicity, except they're a little more... Um, they're a little more reliable than that, uh, but they're very simple, very simple bots. Um, they, they like have four channels that have four bots that operate within them. You're probably most familiar. If you're, if you're not a new pragmatic uh, subscriber, you are probably most familiar with um, the Couchbot. And Couchbot is the connection that fires and tells you when I'm streaming over here on the YouTubes. And then, um, and then if you're inside the program, you have C2Bot. And C2Bot is every morning at 9 a.m. Asking, asking you, hey, let's check in. It's basically running stand-up. Um, it, it, am I saying that you could replace a, a scrum master or a project manager with a bot? No, not entirely. But there is one aspect of that job, which is gathering everybody together at 9 a.m. to check in and see what's going on. I think that can be done by a bot. Um, it also could be done by an alarm clock, a really fancy alarm clock. Um, but that bot died today. So I'm not I'm not ready to pour one out for that for C2Byte yet though. Um, I'm gonna go try to try to figure out what the hell happened there and fix that. Um, otherwise, Rebecca's in here. She's got some questions. Um, it looks like some things broke. And if there's n if there's anything I, I enjoy, uh, it is uh, it is fixing a fixing a broken thing or figuring out what what broke on a thing. Uh, we had we had that issue yesterday where it was just a positioning issue, but it really threw me off on Melanie's uh, drop down. Um, you know, there are things that I you know I just intuitively go, oh, this is how this is supposed to work because I know the basic properties of CSS and I know how to apply them. Um, but these weren't working. It was just because the positioning was was um, it was weird. It was listed as static by default. And static is the default, and I've never seen it listed like that. So, um, you know, when when something's lit normally there as a default, you don't typically then see it written out. So that was throwing me off a, a bit. Um, that said, I'm ready to get into it, um, and hopefully I won't be too discombobulated by the death of my my poor little bot. I'm saddened. I'm all the sads. Um, there are real problems out there in the world, though, folks. Uh, speaking of real problems out there in the world, um, Katie, Katie's jumping into the COVID projects. Um, I will say that she had, she had selected a, a, an assortment of projects she's considering applying for. And uh, I formally, of the six, I blessed three. I, I'm not covering those here today because I wanted to get her push. I didn't want to make her wait for this to go look through. Hey, here's the ones I really like. Um, but just know that there are still people pushing... Uh, projects up that are worth giving a look okay over there on the help with COVID site um, this isn't slowing down and actually what's interesting is hotspots it, it may seem like okay it's slowing down here or it's slowing down in Spain yeah but it's speeding up in Russia and in Brazil and in India um, so this is one of those things where it kind of it rolls and as we see it roll that's the that's kind of the scary thing like if it would if it would spike and then die down in a relative con, or, you know constrained fashion where it's like China Europe US then I'd be like okay and we're done but now we're seeing it spike up in these other areas it's like oh crap this is gonna keep going so keep an eye out for that um, on, on the upside hey there's awesome projects getting released because people have new ideas on the downside it's like crap we, we need these projects because this thing isn't dead so all that said, let's jump in. Let's jump in. Uh, so Rebecca was saying that she was having a having trouble with 
and let's jump in here to her journal. Um, my calendar was busy yesterday. Um, so the biggest priority is get the CWS case study live as possible. So for some reason, I went to record the Cell Eyes Hero animation we worked on and it isn't behaving like it did when we built it. I tried slowing down, but no luck. I'm drawing a blank again. I would appreciate your help in getting it back to the way it was so I can plug it into the case study. All right, so let's go take a look at that because um, what we were working on, if we go to the prototype, was this bad boy. And we, the trouble with fixing this is we we, we did some black magic up here to, um, to get it to work properly. So I'm gonna put this in play mode and uh, yes, I'm just gonna ask my bottom, that bottom nav to go away. I'm gonna increase this. Uh, okay, I guess that's as much, much as, as far as it's going. Okay, all right. Okay. Yep. I gotta be honest with you, Rebecca. I think it's it's functioning as we had it. Now we can adjust this slower, um, and I'm not completely certain if. Um, so this little animation that's playing, I'll, I'll try to I'll try to go through. For, for you home players that are that are following along, uh, let's start over here at home page 18. So there's a transition in here. And it's utilizing, if we click on it, it's utilizing the the right arrow on your keypad. So every, so instead of tapping on it, I'm just I'm controlling the animation with the keypad and I'm just hitting the right arrow. And because it's looped back around, as you'll notice you know, by this arrow coming back, every animation just it just continues to loop so so that's that's great that's beneficial i like that a lot but um to control this and to get it to basically to get this to work um we've had to come in and group not the navigation but this hero slide yeah here it is So we've got these these groups in here and let's uh, yeah it's names and we come in here to names and there's two names here um, if we if we s sit here and say instead of clip content show the content um, which is what happens when you have clip content deselect it you'll see that the app creation is over to the is over to the right or I'm sorry I have no I have no sense of direction it's over to the left and what that what is happening is when this is transitioning if you go to 19 and you open names you see you see app create co-creation and 5g deployment if we go deselect clip content on this one you'll see 5g deployment is now over to the right so what's really occurring here is in this animation, the little ball, and, and again, what Rebecca's trying to do is she's trying to tell her animation team what the desired animation is. They have all the, they have all the graphics and they, you know, they have the artists that, that are drawing the, the full animation, but she's wanting this, this thing to ping back and forth between two towers, okay? Um, and with it, what happens is it carries this word into frame across. And then when it gets across, the word the, the word that was being featured is now hidden. And it does this back and forth. And every time it does it, what, what occurs is there's this momentary shift. And I'll show you what I mean. So here, we come into the next frame, and if we turn this off you'll see that from here to here app co-creation doesn't switch but it changes names to network dynamics and that network dynamics name is interesting because over here it has to retain 5g deployment for the sake of the auto animate 
which is, um, if I can find my way back over here, is Smart Animate. Smart Animate will magically make transitions for you if the assets are named the same thing. So I changed the name of Network Dynamics over here, but then I had to go back and re and roll back the name of the actual actual text layer to the old name so that it would trick Figma into continuing to, to do the animation. Otherwise, Figma would, would ignore the animation and just say, oh, this is a new asset, and put it in the screen. So that's, that's what's happening here when, you, when you're watching this go by. And notice, actually, this might be a, a really good way to show you what's happening. So it, it, it hit itself there because I, because I no longer have, um, I no longer have the hide content or clip content. So as it comes over, you see it slide over and then it immediately switches. And what's happening there, and this is important, and I'm also explaining this because Rebecca seems like you're, you know, we did this and we might have done it so fast that you forgot the details of it. But right here, this is not a, a animate thing. This is after a delay of one millisecond, instantly pop from 5G to network dynamics. So it's like immediately switch and then go again. So I'm not even, I'm not, this isn't triggered, this after delay, this is not triggered to any sort of uh, keypad move. It's just loading up for the next one. So let's go back and look at that again. I'll hit R for refresh. So it moves over and then immediately switches and then it moves back and you get, you get the sense of what's happening there. Moves over immediately as it ends, pops to the next one and then moves back. And you notice how it faded away. And that's because we're, we're moving from a situation where the content is clipped to a situation where the content isn't clipped. So, so that's how this is working. And as far as I can tell, Rebecca, this is working as we previously designed. I'm gonna go back and turn those clipped contents back on. Um, this is also how you do um, side sliding sections of an app. Um, that, that, which is something that I've had people go, hey, hey, how is that? How is that occurring? Well, that is how it occurs. Uh, did C2 Bot fire? Hey, C C2 Bot, you're 51 minutes late. C2 Bot's not dead. It was just lost. You know, I'm going to take a momentary. I'm going to take a moment to talk about this for a second. There are a few things that are more frightening to me than um, than technology that acts like a human does when your bot shows up late <laughs> that is a very human like activity a little weird maybe it isn't that c2bot was broken maybe it's just aware maybe it had to go get coffee or something i i don't know that's really bizarre i dislike technology that operates on its own schedule because now I have to go investigate why. Very bizarre. All right. Sorry for the side note. But I did spend a good 15 minutes in investigating that. Be, be, you know, put me behind for feedback loop today. It's like, what, what's happening with the bot? What's that all about? Oh, God. It's a terrible All right. I hope that helps. Rebecca, I hope that helps you understand what's happening with the animation. That is indeed that is indeed the speed that we had it at, though. Um, so, you know, I'm not I'm not completely sure what you thought you might get there. I will say this though, if you're if you're looking, so I've got I've got a couple ways that I could record this. I could do a cloud app thing. Um, I could come through and this is a GIF maker, and I'm I'm just gonna come through and copy it into GIF form um maybe this will be beneficial to you maybe it won't but we'll find out soon enough all right so yeah it's recording or i think it's recording and maybe now it's recording
move my cursor. I'm gonna re restart that. We can clip this. One, two, three, four, one, two. And actually, it's too. You're right. It's too fast. You're you're right. I I get it now, and I think I know. I think I understand. I think I understand a little better what the what the problem is, Rebecca. Um, you probably when you're when you're working through this it's one then you've got to count two three four now what's interesting is you could set this up on an auto delay that wasn't triggered by a key I'll, I'll show you how to do that all right so if I said instead of keypad I just want this to be um, well I think you have to you actually have to start it with a keypad and then after that after you've after you've begun the transition can you okay, instead of keypad you can then say after delay of you know 1000 milliseconds make the next transition and here this one is this one's just after delay that's the reload this one is after delay and you could you, or you you could do it after delay and we'll make it one second and this one is automatic transition and this one's going to be after after delay and it's going to take us back and now you've basically got it down to you've got it down to one one keystroke starts the thing okay so we're back here i'm going to hit it and now hands up it's just going to do its its thing and then it's done now you could slow that down how would you slow it down well like for instance here you could change that to 2000 okay so this is going to take two seconds and this one which is one one second because again milliseconds 1000 seconds milla uh, equals one second so now it's gonna be two seconds and then after that let's go over here this is gonna be two seconds alright so that's gonna slow it down significantly um, that's a keypad the animation is gonna take 8,000 seconds so really this after delay is just deter it's not determining how long the transition takes it's determining how long to wait before triggering the transition okay so let's come back through and do it again and then I'll, I'll just let you record it on whatever but I'm gonna keypad hands up do it again do it again okay and that's that's the animation so We've went from being a, hey, you hit the keystroke, and that's going to be variable because you're never going to hit it at the same exact speed every time, to basically saying you get it started, you hit the keystroke whenever you want it to begin, like now, and then you set the after delay to trigger, and then it's going to control the animation as, as it goes. Um, this is, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of different ways that you can do animations this is one I like I like this method because it allows you to um, shift directions but you have to you have to basically go in there and rename assets and kind of trick Figma into doing it I will say that there are some updates that have been released for Framer that I will be looking into in the in the near future because Framer and Figma seem to keep moving closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer, and closer to each other um, which is interesting. Framer Web was just released, but we just, we just haven't used Framer a lot. Um, but I will be basically Framer's copying a lot of what Figma was doing, just with better animations. Um, but I'm I'm still like a big fan of Figma, so I'm not really ready to go buy Figma mainly because Figma has this amazing ecosystem. One of the things that Eve pointed out, uh, uh, well, actually Eve. Eve didn't necessarily d directly point this out, but there is a um, robust, robust illustration plugin 
Um, av- uh, so here's Avatar, and you can get a lot of illustrations that are basically open sourced um, from the plugin community. Um, now, some of them, to get them to be high resolution, uh, like blush.design is one of them, uh, you have to pay like a monthly fee. But this gives you, this is an avatar illustration system. And what's interesting is like, if you look at it, it's like, okay, so here's the ears. You got a couple of different options for the ears. Here's the base. Here's the ear ring. Here's the mouth. The, the hair that's possible, the eyes, the eyebrows. It's like a Mr. Potato Head for Figma. Oh, that's so cool to think about it that way. But it just shows you the creativity of what you can actually do in the platform that, you know, it really wasn't a thing before. And, it, you know, it is kind of interesting. Um, I wonder if we should just, like, have a, a master um, or a, a main Figma file where we all go in and make our own little Mr. and Mrs. Potato Heads. Um, why don't we just call it potato heads? Can we go in and make our own potato heads? I don't know. It, you know, for, from a branding perspective, I think it needs a Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head because it's a, it, like one comes with like eyelashes and lips and the other one comes with a hat. Uh, or maybe Mrs. Potato Head also comes with a hat. Maybe her, it, hers is just a fancier hat. Um, I bet you thought you were tuning in this morning. You were going to talk all about potato heads. I bet that's what you thought and you were right. That was a weird dream you had, but it actually came true. Um, and by the way, if you're dreaming about what we're talking about in Feedback Loop, give me some of what you're having. All right? Let's get out of this. Let's ski daddle. Uh, let's come back over to Rebecca's. Uh, she also had questions related to any suggestion on what I could do to make to get the Cellwise case study looking more posh and professional. Maybe changing the image sizes. Okay. Let's come over to... Rebecca Bar Design. Um, uh, I think you pressed this up, but let's see. Case study. Cellwise.html. Yeah, it's in there. Okay. This project. Um, so a couple of things I consider is I, I want to really fix this. Like this is just driving me nuts. I also might switch sides on this. I don't really see a lot of advantage on having the illustrations over here. I might have them over here, just so the typography starts on the same edge. Um, information architecture. This might be an interesting spot to go edge to edge um, with your with your you know your um, what you're displaying. I might if I if you did that, I might consider moving. Um, yeah, you still haven't put your wireframes in here. Um, it's interesting. This is your information architecture here. Uh, there's a lot of space here. A lot of space here. Uh, might move this to that side. Um, this isn't, like, really... I don't, I don't, I really think you could just do this as a three column thing and just have it. You don't have, you're, it's not really displaying properly here. Um, I really think that all of this, inf all of this information could, could somehow be displayed in just regular HTML, uh, made with line work. Um, and then you've got this rocket ship here. I think I would, I would put it over here and, and just have the text aligned to this side. Um, and maybe have your rocket ship over here. That's what I would do. Um, so it, it's a lot of little adjustments. Um, and, and like the teeter totter, I would, I'd probably go, you know, like it's this shape, but I'd go white. I'd go to the full width with it. But I take out some of this top because you don't need. Like I'm, I'm guessing if I move this. Yeah, you can kind of see there's some top and to and bottom to the image. Um, if if it's, I mean, this isn't a complex shape, so if needed, I would just redraw it so that it like worked for the space. But those are the, like really minor adjustments that I would make right away, and I think that would help it elevate. Okay, um, let's see. Anybody else pop in while we were going through that? 
No. No. So uh, we did a, a deep dive on that animation um, bit. We also got into um, Pigment Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Potato Heads, um, which is cool. I think I'm going to release that to the community. We'll, we'll remix the Avatar thing, and um, maybe we'll just have a new pragmatic community. And um, hell, we could even uh, we could even pop those in as our avatars if you wanted to. Anyway, that's really all I have. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Uh, Lisa, I know you're coming up a little bit later today, so I'm super excited to talk with you because you've got a bunch of things going on. And uh, otherwise, you people hang tight, and I'll see you later. Take care.